second tutorial of Creative Tools course. This one is, well, we are ramping up in the, in the complexity, I guess. Um, and this one is actually going to look like this portion right here. So it's going to be a, a little bit bigger than the one that we did in the previous tutorial. Um, and I will be using this as my, um, as my notes, so to say, so that I don't miss anything. And also, it's a pretty large one. I might forget something, so I'll kind of keep referencing it. Um, yeah, ju that's just a note. By the end of this tutorial, what you will have is you will have a robot with a proper tool that can do this. Right, so it cuts away the first cut, cuts away the second cut, cuts away the third cut, and then finishes off with the last cut. I can't see it right there. Just move it back a bit. So the last cut is here. Walk. And then we'll finish off where it started. Whoop. Right? So that is going to be our, our tutor tutorial right here. Right? We're going to do it. All right. Many things to do. So let me actually take this. And I, don't, I have no idea where to move it. Um, let me move it just here for now. So this area right here is what you have so far. Right? Actually, let me hide everything from here so that you don't get confused. Um, this is what you have so far, right? This, this, uh, this script right here. And it's basically just a bunch of cuts, a bunch of booleans, right, from, from a box. Um, so the thing is that we needed to do this script to visualize how the element is going to look like. But what we actually care about is not the the element itself, but rather those surfaces that we use with which we cut the element, right? So it's actually these guys right here, these lofts. Bam. This loft right here. Oh, by the way, uh, just be prepared. It's going to be a long one. <laughs> this loft right here. This loft right here. Up, 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 up. Here we go. This guy right here. And this loft right here. So we have four lofts that kind of showcase four cuts, right? Uh, this is the most important thing for us uh, when we determine the tool path of the robot. So what I'm going to do, well, first thing is I don't want to accidentally select the curves uh, as, as I'm kind of moving around. So I'm going to actually maybe hide them. Yeah, let's hide them. So I'll go to layers and I'll just, uh, why don't I have the fourth cut? Ah, doesn't matter. Let me just hide them in Rhino. So not, not through layers, but rather in Rhino by just selecting them and typing in hide. There we go. They're gone now. So let's start off by kind of creating the, creating those lofts separately, separated from, uh, from, from this definition, so that this part, this definition right here, would be like a separate entity. And then the next one, this one that we're going to be doing, is going to be like a completely separate, separated script from, from this one. Um, so what I'm going to do is I will actually be uh, borrowing these um, curve inputs. Right? cutting curves inputs, and I'll be creating loft from them, lofts from them. So I'll take these cutting curves, copy, paste, control V, control, control C, control V, copy, paste. And I'll just drag it down somewhere here. And if I look at them, you know, that, that's, that's my curves that I have referenced. So I basically have two copies of them now. Um, and I will, I, I really need to know which cut is the first, which cut is the second, and which cut is the third. So I will actually uh, click my scroll wheel, group, uh, click on the fidget spinner icon, group this, right click on the group, 
and, and, and just type in first cut, right? And I'll kind of do the same thing for all of the remaining ones. Cutting curves, drag it all the way down here. Uh, that's going to be my second cut. Where's my, there, there are my curves for the third cut. Again, dragging all the way down here. My God, it becomes so small. Um, that's my third cut. Wait, one, two, three, four. Copy, paste, drag it down, drag, 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 uh, drag, drag, drag. There we go. Okay, so just double checking. Uh, always important to double check. Okay, good. That's the second cut. Bam, that's the third cut, bam, that's the fourth cut, bam, that's perfect, these work. Okay, so now I'm going to group these guys, and I'll name them, name them properly, right? So that's the second cut, that's the third cut, that's it, cut. And that is going to be the fourth cut. Good. So now we have these curves, like these, these uh, four lists of curves. And I want to join them up into a single, single input, or rather single output, right? But I still want to have them separated. So this is where data trees come in handy. Uh, because uh, with a data tree, you can have multiple lists in one output. So to build a data tree from this, and actually I can show you one, one, one little thing. 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 Um, there is merge, right? And there is entwine. These two components. Um, merge just basically takes stuff from different lists and merges them into one list right so if i look at look at it through the panel i can see that all of my curves are right now in the single list right and if i try to loft them loft if i try to loft them um, and i need to hide all of the other stuff so let me hide all of this disable preview I can see that it creates this kind of a mess, this kind of a single loft through all of these curves. And this is not what we want. We still want to have separated lofts, right? So this doesn't work. That's because merge takes everything and puts everything into a single list, if it can, right? And twine, on the other hand, and also while we're at it, I can just show you the data tree structure looks like this. One branch, 18 curves in that branch. Right? If I double click that, that's the, how cool the data tree is. Basically just one list, right? Nothing fancy. And Twine, on the other hand, takes the inputs, like so, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2. Uh, if I zoom into the Twine and I click the plus button, I can add one more input right here, 0, 3. Uh, so it takes the inputs. And it creates, it places them in separate, rather, it places them in separate data branches. So see how these are now separated? And if I take a look at it with the uh, param viewer, this, this guy right here, if I take a look at them, it's going to say data with four branches. That's because we have four inputs. And each of the branches have different amount of curves in them. And if I double click that, I can see, you know, yeah, the data tree now has four lists inside of it. So that's how basically the, the benefit of data trees. And now these, these curves don't, don't see each other. These groups of curves don't see each other. So if I do a loft, it's going to create a loft through like only like separate groups of curves. So these guys will be lofted into a single surface. These guys, these guys, and these guys, all of them will be lofted into separate surfaces. Okay, so merge, no need, no need for merge. We have the loft now. All right, so we have this going. 
that's cool and all. Let's see what kind of settings I used. I used type 2 for loft, which was tight. Sure. So we can use that, that same option that we already used. So I'll just do loft options. Loft options for that loft. And type was set to type 2. So uh, I will not be changing it that much. So I'll just type in slash slash 2 to create a panel with number 2 in it. And just plug in, plug in, plug it in like so. Okay, that is done. I can hide these for now, and I can check the that I I have four lofts here. That's great. That that's perfect for us. That's what we want to have. So that is the first step. Is basically rebuilding only the cutting curves and also making it a little bit smaller than you know what what it. As small as it possibly can be, basically. Um, next up, let me double check. Yeah, next up we will actually need to explode this. Uh, so these are still in separate branches, right? Now I want to explode them back into separate surfaces so that I can work with each surface individually and kind of figure out a way of how to... Um, how to make a tool path through the surface for the tool that we're going to be using. So I will uh, use a tool that's called explode tree. Explode tree right here, which just says bang. And I'll connect the loft to the explode tree component. You can see that it uh, becomes orange. And the reason why it's orange, if I click on this box right here, it's, it's going to say tree contains more branches than this component has output parameters. Yes, uh, I only have two outputs while I have four data branches here. So I just need to add more outputs. If I zoom in to this uh, component, I can click on this plus sign once and then twice. Come on. There we go. And now I have four outputs, right? And now it's not complaining anymore. Great. We have separate we have just separated these outputs into single surface, single surface, single surface, single surface. Great. I'll just create, just for um, cleanliness of it, I'll just create a surface, SRF, surface component. It's just an empty surface component, nothing fancy. And I'll just connect it like so uh, to the first branch. So we will be working with just the first cut for now. And we will kind of... Um, copy and paste the solution to all other outputs here. So what I mean by that is I can actually show you here this, 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 and this. All of these are identical, almost identical, right? You want to have flexibility to, to change things for each individual surface. Um, that is why we are doing it this way. <clears throat> um, it is big, but there are a lot of copies of the same thing. Uh, so all of this is just four copies of the same thing. All right, so we have that. Um, so we have a we have a surface. Now uh, we need to understand how does the robot. Well, and let me hide everything else. There we go. Just this surface here. We need to understand how does the robot register the position of the arm or the position of the tool rather according to the surface. And the way it does it is through planes. So a plane is, uh, well, in the perspective view, that's a plane, for instance, right? A plane is just some sort of uh, a, a vector based type of, a vector based entity which has x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. And z-axis is usually not shown. I kind of like it to be shown, so I'll, I'll show you how to, how to show it. But it, it's basically that. It's x, y, z-axis, and it's basically a coordinate system, right? So the way robot understands planes is by... Um, let me show you the robot real fast. There we go. And let me, let me show you the first plane, 
if I can find it. There we go. This guy right here. Right, so that is the first plane and it has uh, Y, X is red, Y is green and Z is, uh, we, we have no idea where the Z is. There is like a three finger rule on how to check it, but I always forget it, uh, how to use that rule. So let's just call it, we don't know where, where the Z axis is towards, is it towards here or towards here, right? It's definitely 90 degrees to both of these, but is it towards the right or towards the left? We don't know. But this is a plane, right? So as the simulation is running, the robot, by the way, also has also has its own plane. Well, it has multiple planes, but uh, this one is the important one, right? So it has the initial orientation of the tool, and you can see that the wire the wire goes along the Y axis, right? Along the, this, uh, can I zoom in? No, I can't. This green line right here. By the way, if your planes are too small or too big, oh, uh, uh, later, I'll, I'll show you. Uh, for now, ignore that. Um, so we know that the wire goes along the Y axis, right? And the X axis looks down. And also I can kind of, this is how you check for the Z axis, so Z axis is sticking out, uh, outwards from the wire. So it's basically sticking downwards, I guess, in this case. Um, you know, if, if, if you rotate the arm into the cutting position, then the, this line right here, this line segment would be sticking down. Um, we'll come back to that in just a second. But this is basically a plane, right? So if I start running the simulation just slightly, you can see, wait, why is it doing that? Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, that it, it needs to do that. Uh, just a second. Sorry, that was my bad. I show you the wrong plane. This, these planes are the important ones. <laughs> God damn it, that was the starting plane. Uh, these, these planes are the important ones. And it is indeed going to hit those planes as it's moving down to cut and then as it's moving back. And now you can see it. Ah, that was my bad. Like that. And you can see that it's perfectly following these planes right here. I can make less of them maybe. Uh, just so that it's easier for you to see. Is that the incorrect one? Yes, no, that, that, that is fine. So less, less planes just so that you can see better, but it's basically just going to kind of go through, go along them, right, to cut. So this is what's driving the positioning and or orientation of the robot arm. Perfect. That's what we want. So we know that the tool is aligned with the y-axis, and that uh, the tool is going to, the z-axis of the tool is going to be looking outwards, right? Away from the tool, not inwards, not into the tool, but rather outwards. This is default, this, is, this won't change, right? I will give you the tool so it's kind of locked, right? And it basically aligns itself to all of these planes. Let me hide all of that. Let's start building. So for this surface right here, to determine the like the cutting position for the tool on each of these surfaces, we need to uh, somehow get planes that align with um, with the horizontal. I don't know how to call it. Like if it, I'll, I'll just draw on top of this that align with these lines. So we need a bunch of planes that align on these lines where uh, with the y with their y axis so that the wire can kind of go along the surface right um and right now we just have the surface so first of all we need the middle edge here right we need the the, the center line for for the surface so what i'm going to do is i will extract what's called an iso curve ISO curve. Right? 
ISO curve, and it's asking me for two inputs. First one is surface, second one is UV point. So surface is going to be just this guy right here. And UV point is basically, um, you know how you have XYZ, right? Um, for, for any kind of boxy dimension, you have like Cartesian coordinates, X, Y, and Z coordinates. Those are global coordinates, right? Those are basically size in the world. But if your box is rotated, right? Suddenly X, Y, Z coordinates for that rotated box stop working. They don't make sense. So instead, what's you, you being used is called UVW coordinates, which are local. And they are, uh, most of the time, they are proportion-based. Uh, so let's say it like that. If we have a box, right, and it, it's like 50 centimeters by 20 centimeters by 10 centimeters, right, and we want to get a point right in the middle of that box, then we can say that that point is going to be located at um, 25 centimeters uh, by, I already forgot the dimensions of the box, let's say 25 by 15 by 5 centimeters, I don't know, like half of the size of the box, right? If we give half and half and half, then the point is going to be located right in the middle of the box, or we can use UVW coordinates and say that the point is located at 0.5 comma 0.5 comma 0.5 uh, coordinates of the box, right? And 0.5 is going to be like 50%, 50%, 50%. That is the difference between global and local values. So this UV point works with local values, not global, meaning that it's all proportion-based. So if I want a line that goes through the middle, I will just use 0.5 comma 0.5 coordinates, right? So let me do that. Um, double click, slash, slash, that will kind of start up a panel. And I can just hit enter, for instance, or I can uh, and, and double click in the panel and write 0 0.5 comma 0 0.5. Uh, and then just click anywhere else. Don't hit enter, by the way. Uh, enter will just give you another line. And then this is going to complain. Um, stay in the same line, click somewhere else, you have your coordinates. That works. Or a faster way of how to do it is just um, double clicking slash slash 0 0.5 comma 0 0.5 enter. Right? That's that's faster. Plug that into UV. And God damn it, I lied. <laughs> so uh, why Rhino, why are you making this hard on me? So not all <laughs> of the local values are proportion based. Sometimes it bases them in actual millimeters in dimensions, for instance, here. So how do you kind of change it to be proportion based rather than millimeter based? Well, it's really simple. You just right click on the S input right here and choose reparameterize. Reparameterize. So then uh, all of the dimensions that you insert to UV coordinates will be along the uh, U, uh, oh, sorry, will be proportion based rather than in millimeters. Okay, now it works. <laughs> Reparameterize. So we have now two curves. Well, that's natural because there are two directions, right? Uh, for, for it to choose from the U direction and the V direction or vice versa, I don't know. Um, and we need to choose from these curves, from these two outputs, the one that we want. So what I'm going to do is I'll just create a CRV, a curve component, right here. This is empty, this uh, does nothing, this just holds information. Uh, so I'll just create an empty curve component and I'll plug in one of the outputs, let's say U and then select it to highlight it. And I can see that the U output is indeed the one that we want. We want the, the curve that goes along the cutting direction, not across, but along, right? So this is the first thing that might change from surface to surface. Sometimes you might need to change between U and V uh, curves to get the correct, correct direction of cutting, right? This is the first thing. All right, um, I'm hiding everything. Well, 
let me not hide the surface. I'm hiding everything except for the surface and the last curve. And now we are going to create, um, we will divide this curve up into points, right? Into a bunch of points. So for that, I will use divide curve component. Divide curve works well, connect it. Connect curve to the curve input here. And it's by default it gives me eleven points, right? So I I will just kind of say, um, give me like for now, give me like six. We will change this in 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 just a second. But uh, while we're testing it, while we're building it up, I don't want to see too much stuff on the screen. So I'm I'm giving it a low number here. Kinks, we don't care about kinks. We we ignore that input. Um, so we end up with a bunch of points here <clears throat> super and now i need to check my my notes uh, just give me a second um oh sorry just a second Oh, I did it all. I did it other way around. I am sorry. I am sorry. We need to go back. So I, I was just in my head, um, in my own head. Sorry, I did it the uh, wrong way around. Remember when I kind of drew that, or actually I can show it here. These lines that we have, these, these cutting lines that we are not cutting, but these loft lines that we have, uh, we could use these for the orientation. Need to get over over this hump. Um, these lines that kind of um, are used for the loft, we can use these lines. Um, we could use these lines for the uh, planes as well to create the planes, right? Because we already will have the direction then, but we can't really increase the size of them uh, or the amount of them uh, we, we get what we get right uh, so i want to create a parametric tool that will enable us to create more or less of these lines along the surface so the idea is is correct like the the idea what we're doing here is correct but there is one important thing that that we uh, or that i messed up it's we don't want a, uh, we don't want a single curve, right? But rather we want a curve right here along this edge, and we want a curve along this edge. So we want two curves, and then we want to divide both of them those curves and you know point 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 and so on and then we want to connect those points with straight line segments ah. so the more divisions we have the more of these kind of cutting lines we will end up with or construction lines we will end up with so the only thing that i need to change here is i will not be using 0 0.5 comma 0 0.5 i will not be using the midpoint but rather i will be using the uh, the end point, uh, sorry, not the end point, but the start and the end of the surface. And the way we can do it is by giving it two coordinates, one called 0, 0, and the other one called 1, 1. That's it. That's all we need to do. Once I've done that, this will turn red. And the reason why it's red is because we have two lines. And it's basically going to say data conversion failed from text to point. Um, the reason why it's doing that is because whenever you have two lines of text, it's going to start reading it as if it's poetry, uh, you know, as if it's some sort of a text file rather than set of coordinates. So we need to let it know that, yo, this is a multi-line text, right? Or, or yo, this, this text needs to be separated into separate lines. So I will right click on this panel. I'll choose uh, multi-line data. I'll click on that. And now we can see that the text has been placed into two separate list items. And now this whole, whole thing works. 
and we can continue because now the divide works as well. And just as I said, we get the last line, we get the first line, and we get the divisions. If I were to change between U output and V output, you would end up with these two lines, right? And with these divisions here, which wouldn't make any sense whatsoever. We need them to be along the cutting direction, right? Okay, so we have that done. Now, um, if I were to check it with a panel, I can see that I have two lists, two separate lists of points for the right-hand side and for the left-hand side, right? So both of those lists will have, let me make the smaller, uh, like count two. So both of these lists will have three points start, middle, and start, middle, end, right? Um, how do I connect the start with the start, middle with the middle, end with the end, right? Uh, that, that's, that's the question. And this is a little bit tricky um, to do. Well, it's a little bit tricky to, to comprehend, but I'll, I'll do my best. So first of all, let me explain it with uh, my cat dog uh, mouse system. If we have cat, dog, mouse, right, multi-line data, if we have a list of cat, dog, and mouse, and then we have a list of um, let's just say one or, or no, uh, A, B, C, A, B, C, right? alphabetical list and if we want cat to be paired with a dog to be paired with b mouse to be paired with c oh sorry actually we just need to entwine it as well um just into one one output so that it's kind of similar to what we get here so let me just do that real fast and just take a look at it from right here so right now, uh, here, why is, oh, <laughs> uh, so right now here and here, we have kind of the same thing, right? It's only that here, it's just uh, uh, coordinates of the point. So it's, it's basically three points here and three points here that we need to pair up. You know, first point with the first point, second point with the second point, third point with the third point. And here I want to pair up cat with A, dog with B, mouse with C. To do that, a tool that does that is called flip matrix. Flip matrix. If I flip the matrix, then it's going to take uh, all items from each branch that have index zero and it's going to place them in a separate branch. It's going to take all items with index one from each branch and it's going to place them in a separate branch. So now after flip matrix, how it's going to look like, it's going to be cat A, dog B, mouse C, right? Exactly what we want. So if I do flip matrix on this, then I can see the same thing appearing, which means that now, my pairs of points live in the same list, right? Uh, in, in same lists, plural. Uh, and suddenly I can connect them quite easily with just, uh, let's say, polyline tool. <clears throat> polyline tool, which asks me for the vertices or the points. Uh, so I just connect them in and voila, it just connects the pairs, right? Then it, it's, it's done now. Uh, and now the nice thing about it is that I can increase the amount and it's going to kind of control how many I get. So I can even kind of create a slider that's slightly larger, 25, let's say, you know, and kind of increase it quite drastically, right? For now, though, I'm going to stick to some lower number, let's say seven, seven or yeah, let's say seven, seven is fine. Just for testing right so so that's that so now we have our planes oh fool, not planes sorry we just have a bunch of polylines now we need to create planes that are located in the middle 
of the poll lines. Let me check how I did that. I don't want to mess it up and even more. Uh, that's going to be a lot of work. Um, okay, so we, first of all, we need the center point for each line, and that is easy. That is just evaluate curve. Evaluate curve component which asks us to, to give it a curve, so we just give it a curve. And t, that's a parameter. That's also local, not global. So we will be using a number, slash slash 0 0.5. Half, right? That's it. We get the middle points here. Um, can I start hiding things? I don't want so many things to be shown. Maybe we can even hide I shouldn't hide the surface, right? Yeah, let's keep the surface on. Okay, so uh, I just have the surface on, uh, the pole lines on, and the evaluation points, uh, evaluation output on, which is the middle points, right? Now, we start creating the planes. If here in the top, I go to the vector tab, I can see planes, uh, plane options here and these are like all of the possible ways of how you can cr create planes uh, The one that I really like using is construct plane uh, straight up construct plane tool uh, So I'll be using that construct plane. Let's see what it asks us <clears throat> what it asks us of first What's the origin of the plane? Uh, well, it needs to be in the middle right in the middle of each line so that's my point output of the evaluation. That's the origin. Okay, cool. We, we get a bunch of planes. Okay, the, by the way, if the planes are too big or too small for your taste, you can go to display, preview plane size, and change the plane size here to larger, bigger numbers. So I'll just, I can just do like a thousand. And now my planes are super big, right? So let me, oops, oh no, uh, point flavor, cross, display, plane size, let's change it back to, I, I, I'm just using 100, <clears throat> 100 millimeters. Okay, so we have that. The thing is that right now the planes are not oriented properly, right? All of them are kind of oriented, well, they are oriented along the y and x direction of the world but they are their location is proper but their orientation is not so we need to figure out what kind of inputs to give it for the x and the y um let me double check how i did it again just so that we don't don't mess it up okay so it's going to be like a two-step process that's fine um so the, th the first thing is understanding what a tangent is from evaluation. What, what kind of thing, um, yeah, what a tangent is, right? Um, if I were to draw a curve, yeah, something like this, right? And I will reference it in as a curve. You don't need to do this, by the way. This is just me explaining the tangent. And I will just kind of do the evaluation real fast. And I'll do the evaluation with multiple values. Like that. Uh, maybe even more. 20. Yeah, like that. Uh, so what is a tangent well i can visualize it by doing um uh, by increasing the amplitude a tangent first of all is a vector so it's it's a way of how to describe direction and let me just kind of make it a little bit bigger for you so that you can see um and let me visualize it vector display Bam. Okay, so this is, all of these vectors are tangents, right? These, this is the T output. These are the directions that we get from a curved line, right? So at every point, it finds the seamless, uh, like a, 
how does the line seamlessly kind of continue on? Uh, at what direction would the line seamlessly continue on, right? Uh, at, at each of these points. So it's basically showing you the, the alignment of the curve at that particular point, right? Or the direction of the curve. That is perfect for us because here, here, we do have the, if, if I were to do the same thing here for the tangents, for, for these curves, uh, so let me just replace that real fast. Bam. And for that, I will need to kind of hide a bunch of things so that you, you can see better. I can see that um, these tangents go along these pole lines here, right? That's great. That's, that's our y. It needs to be our y axis, right? So we are going to do exactly that. Tangent will come into the y axis. And let me show the plane so that you can immediately see what's going to happen. Once I connect t to y, like so, nothing changes. Yo. What? Is it because of the X? I think it's because of the X. Yes, it is because of the X. Oh, come on. I, I wanted to show it so, so badly. Um, sure. Okay. Keep that thought. Keep that thought. Um, let's disconnect it. Holding down the control key, by the way. Disconnect it. And first, let's do the X. Because if you don't give anything into the X, it will not show up. Uh, so to, to get that kind of nice showing, we first need to kind of fix it with the X. So the X um, is going to be, since I'm doing it in two steps, the first step is I want to have vertical curves, uh, sorry, vertical planes, planes that are vertically placed. And then I'm going to rotate them back to horizontal uh, position. So to do a, cur uh, a plane that is vertical, uh, while it's also aligned with these lines along the y direction, it means the x direction needs to be either straight up or straight down. And I don't remember which one I used. <laughs> yes, I used straight down. Okay. Uh, so the x direction needs to be either straight up or straight down. So um, we are using straight down, but it can work other way around as well. Um, but I am going to use straight down. So the x is going to be actually globally along, uh, it's going to come along the z axis, the z vector, unit z, like that. But that z vector is going to be negative, it's going to go down. So it's going to also have a negative component to it, right? So we have a vector that's going straight down, we connect it to negative, or sorry, we have a vector that's going straight up. We connect it to negative, so now it's going straight down, and then we connect it to the x input. Once I do that, you can see that all of my planes are now, uh, at least the x axis of them are looking down, right? For all of the planes here. Now it's becoming a little bit more... There we go. So these are, are looking straight down, right? Okay, we have that done. Oh my god. Um, now I can connect tangent to the y axis. So, yes, yes, yes. So now we can see that x is going straight down while y is, has been aligned with the, with the tangent for all, of these, uh, for all of these horizontal curves. That is exactly what we wanted. Okay. But... If now we were to try and cut, the problem would be that the robot arm would need to kind of uh, work on it in this direction, right? So the tool would come in at a very weird angle, uh, right? And then would start cutting. Instead, we want the tool to come in straight down, like so, right? So we are going to do exactly that. Uh, we will rotate these planes to be oriented 
so, so that their z vectors orient downwards. Right now, x is orienting downwards. We want the z to be oriented downwards. So I will just use rotate 3D, rotate 3D, and I'll be the geometry that I'm going to rotate is going to be my planes. So I'll connect those. The angle for rotation, well, we'll figure out the angle later. The center of rotation is going to be, of course, the middle point. Like, so that comes in from the evaluation. That's the center. I'll, I know that there's a lot, a lot of wires going on. I'm trying to keep it as clean as possible. Maybe something like so. Yeah, sure. Mm, maybe lower. <clears throat> and the axis of rotation is going to be along the tangent again, right? So because I, we want to rotate it along the around the y axis. So that's going to be along the tangent like that. And if I hide everything except for the final output, I can see that it has been rotated even though I haven't described uh, an angle. And here the angle is done in radians and I hate it. I really prefer to use degrees for the angle. So I'm going to right click on the A input and choose degrees. Right? And now for the degrees, I'll just create a slider. So the way you create a slider, have I told you this before? Well, the shortcut, the fast way of how to create a slider is you type in the smallest number that you want in the slider, and then you type in, uh, you type in dot dot, and you type in the largest number. So for instance, here, I want the possibility of rotating the, uh, the plane by minus 90 degrees up until plus 90 degrees, right? So I'll type in minus 90 dot dot 90. Enter. So now I have a slider that's minus 90 up until 90. And I'll just connect it to the angle input here. And now I can move that, that slider here. And you can see how you know, these, pla these planes are flipping around. Right? OK, so we have that. Um, I still have no idea if the z axis of the planes is looking down or up. So actually, this is the time when I need to test, need to make sure. So how do we show the z axis? Well, we just draw the line. Uh, so I am going to deconstruct uh, the planes, deconstruct plane. I'm deconstructing these planes, and it gives me oh, uh, the origin, the x, y, and z vectors. And I will just say, OK, so draw me a line from uh, start, direction, location. So the shortcut for it is SDL, line SDL. Basically, it draws a line from the start point along the direction we've given length, SDL. So the start of the line is our origin, like so. The direction for the line, because we want to visualize the z vector, of course, it's going to be the z vector. And the length of the line, I'll just give it like 100. I don't know. I think 100 will do. Yeah. Well, maybe less. That's a little bit big. Uh, let me just actually do a panel. 50. 50 will do. And now I can see that my... Um, my planes are looking upward, right? Which means that the tool will be cutting from down up and it's not going to work, right? The robot arm will just break itself. So we need to flip it around, right? We need to, oh, we need to cut from top to down, right? So the tool needs to be held like so. Um, so I'm going to just switch the angle to plus 90 degrees. That's it. Now, now, it's, it, uh, now the orientation is correct. Ooh, okay. That is done. That part is done. We have our planes. At this point on, we can even increase the, the amount of planes, like to 100 or something, but I would suggest kind of keeping it reasonable, right? Something like this, I think, is, is okay. 
So uh, these planes are basically going to be a set of coordinates for the robot arm to go through in, in terms of cutting. Okay, so we have that done. I'm, I'm just hiding everything except the rotate 3D and the line. So the, these two guys are not being hidden. Everything else is hidden. Um, do I want to break? We are right here. No, I don't want a break. Let's 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 uh, push a little bit further, and then we will. And then I'll make a break. Um, okay. So let's say, sure, we, we have the planes and we can cut through them. The problem is that the robot, as it's moving in, it needs to... Um, how do I explain this? The first coordinate from which you start cutting shouldn't be right at the start of the cut. Right? It needs to be a little bit away from the cut so that there's a little bit of kind of slowing down and kind of start starting the cut. So there, there needs to be this kind of threshold at which the robot will say, oh, okay, yeah, 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 okay, got it, I, I'll start cutting now. And then it's going to kind of move into the cut. So the way I kind of think about this is if we take the first plane and the last plane and we move them up, above the above this um sorry ab ab above above this surface then the robot will will kind of start working from here and then kind of move down start the cut and once it's finished it's going to move up to the safe position and that is called retraction position and uh, yeah that's that's how it's done in the industry so we need two more planes and we need to add those two planes to the rest of the list. Let me double check one thing. I think, yeah. So at this point on, we are still working with a data tree. You can see that we're working with a data tree because it's all dashed lines. Dashed lines means that a data tree system is going through uh, those lines and we don't need uh, we don't uh, need the data tree anymore, right? So what I'm going to do, um, what am I going to do? I'm going to flatten out the output. So I'll choose flatten. Right click on the rotate 3D geometry output and choose flatten. This will force all of these planes to be in a single list. Right? It, it's going to get rid of the data tree, even the wires change, right? So, so you can see that it's a single list. I can double check with the panel. Yeah, all of them are now in a single, single list. Before it looked like this. Separate branches. And even I can show you even better here. Like that. And after flattening, all of them were moved into a single branch data with one branch okay we have that done so now on to what i was explaining before first plane second uh, last plane so i will use i will extract those two planes by using list item list item tool right here and i'll just uh, make a copy of it because i know that i'll need the first and the uh, and the last uh, item of the list and Basically, I'll just feed in my rotate 3D uh, output into the list item L input here and L input here. That's the list with which we work, right? So by default, list item will give you first item of the list, right? Perfect. That's exactly what we want. And we will say that this is indeed the first item. We will be using this as the first plane, as the first cutting plane. Um, and this one needs to be the last cutting plane, right? So we actually need to get the last item. How do you get the last item of the list, you ask? Well, it's pretty simple. For the item index, so every, every plane has an index, right? The, the small number on the left-hand side is the index 
of the plane. And it's basically numeration of where it is in the list. So by default, this input here is zero. And that is why list item by default gives us the first plane. If we want the last one, the item index is actually minus one because it kind of moves back to the, to the last then, right? <laughs> so for, for the last item, I will just type in slash slash minus one. Panel, connect. Ooh, we're getting there. So that is done. <clears throat> we have the first and the last. Oh, apparently we're starting to cut from the bottom. That's fine. Uh, the first and the last item of the list. Now I said that I want to move them up. Well, wait, double check. Yes, I want to move them up above the, the cut. Uh, or ab above the working piece, right? So I know that the working piece is uh, 200 millimeters high. So I want to move them like 205 millimeters above uh, the, 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 the piece, right? Um, so I will just type in move. I'll use two move components, one for this and one for this, right? But for both of those move components, I'll use the same vector because I'm lazy. So I'll use Z vector. Z is because we're moving it up and I'll just connect it like so. And then into the Z vector, I can connect a value, right? So I will say 205 millimeters. So no matter how low the plane is, it is going to be moved up above the, um, above the material, above the stock right above the block <sighs> okay that is done do we merge now no we don't oh actually this is where we need to stop this is where we need to stop and have a break because we will be uh, building up the robot now we will be putting a pin in this and we will be putting uh, building a robot now uh, just so that we can check how will this work. So just a second, I need to grab some more coffee and then we will continue. Okay, okay, let's, let's move on, let's continue. So we have this so far. Uh, I really want to kind of start testing it with a robot. So let's install some plugins um, to, to get that, that part going. So. The plugins that you will use are uh, going to be Viver, uh, no, sorry, Bufferfish and Robots. So the way you get Pufferfish is from foodforrhino.com. And I'll just double check if, if that is true. Um, let me just grab it here. Buffer fish. Yes, great. Uh, so you do get it from foodforino.com. You just uh, download version 2.9. That's, that's it. And you, um, is there like a tutorial on how to extract it or should I show it to you? Uh, Yeah, fine. Uh, I'll, I'll just show it how to how to install it. So I need to log in just a second. There we go. Uh, you download it. It's going to oh, right. uh, it's going to download somewhere here. There we go. Then it's going to we are going to extract it. And it doesn't update. Now it updates. Perfect. Perfect. And it's basically here. Oh, there is the delete any previous and zip perfect zip file, unblock the file. Uh, so there is like a tutorial on how to use it. But it's basically you just right click, go to properties. Make sure that it's unblocked. If, if there's like an option to unblock it, then you use that option. I should move this back. 
um, you, you unblock it, you go into Grasshopper, File, Special Folders, Components Folder. It will open up uh, your folder where all of the plugins are. And you just drag and drop in perf Pufferfish into the Components folder. For now, I'm not going to do that uh, because I already have it here, but it's basically just going to um, load in here. And once you restart Rhino, then it's just going to, to just work, right? That is just going to work. Uh, it's going to kind of load up this, this tool set for you. So that's Pufferfish. That's easy. Robots is a little bit harder. Um, if you go to the Google and you type in robots grasshopper, uh, you'll see this uh, link appearing, Visos robots slash robots, and that's a GitHub page. So you will need to click on that, right? And here you will have a bunch of, you know, files and whatnot. You don't need those files. What you do is uh, you kind of look at the readme in the bottom um, and, and you just kind of download the binary from the latest release. Sure, click. It's going to give you this page where it's, it says ninth release. Ooh. Well, whatever. Um, and you just download the zip file, robots.zip, right? It's going to be downloaded, show in folder. It always lags for me. Why, why does this always... There we go. And you do the same thing as with Pufferfish. You extract the, the, the folder. You will see that there's two files here robots uh, gha the green one uh you check the properties if it's blocked or not and robots.dll that's also very important so we have two files here you do exactly the same thing right you go to grasshopper file special folders components folder um and you just drag and drop in your 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 files into here and once you restart Rhino, they will load up, right? So let me, uh, I, I guess I don't need to show you how to restart Rhino, right? So just uh, don't forget to save your, your file, save the Rhino file, you know, save everything, restart. And then you should see, you should, should, should see the robots. I'll, uh, the robots plugin here. And also, is this the one? Yeah, 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 that's the one. And also the Pufferfish plugin here. Okay, so you have those two now installed. The thing is that there's one more thing that we need to do. And it's uh, the robots plugin doesn't have it doesn't come with a library of robots, right? So basically, while it still has the, all of the fun functionality on how to generate uh, like instructions for robots, it doesn't have a library of robots for you to choose from. You need to download that library separately. So I don't remember. The one that we will use is Penn State uh, library. And the way you get it is back here and in this github page let me go back uh there is this second link here which says download a robot library okay sure click and here you have well that's not a lot wait a minute why is there not a lot bartlett you am sita or do i just kind of give it to you Maybe I should just give it to you. Oh, there's, there's all. Now yeah, I'll just give it to you. Um, link in the video description, guys. <laughs> just get it from the video description. What you will find is going to be 
Uh, robots. You'll, you'll find this zip file right here, pen state. Once you unzip it, it's going to have an XML file and it's going to have a Rhino file. You will not be opening uh, neither the Rhino file nor the XML file. What you'll be doing though, is you'll go to uh, the documents folder, right? So it's located in C, disk drive, uh, <laughs> users, your user documents. Well, you'll find it, you know, the documents folder, the, the, the main one. So it's the C users, your username documents. And you just create a new folder that is called robots. Enter. I already have it, so I will not be creating one. And you will go into that folder and you will paste or, or move your Rhino and XML file into that folder. Once you've done that, uh, you should be able to, well, just in case, uh, restart just Grasshopper script, right? So just close your Grasshopper script um, and, and restart it. So here, if I, let me, if I select it here, close, and then open it again, it's going to kind of re recheck if there are any robots available for you in, in that documents folder. Um, once you've done all of this, you're good to go. You're, you're, you're kind of all set. So let's actually set it up, right? Let's set it up. So the first thing that I want to do is set up the robot. Uh, so I'll go to the robots uh, and, and we are kind of putting a pin in this for just a second. So I'm going to be working somewhere here in, in this area towards the right, right hand side. Um, so let me check. Uh, yes, we will be setting up the robot first. I will go to robots. I will the, the robots tab. I'll go to components and I will choose load robot system. This guy right here, load, ro, load robot system. Click and it's going to load up the a, a random robot for you. So in my case, I have a little bit more, uh, but you will probably only see the Penn State IRB 2400-16. That is the robot system that we are indeed using for this course. And that is the robot right there, right? With all axes relaxed. Okay, so that is our robot. That is what we're going to be using. And the robot is going to be placed on the world x y coordinate right here you do not you do not give it a different coordinate if you give it a different plane here not world x y the simulation might look okay but once we start cutting it the robot will just slam itself against the wall or something so you do not change that um, so we have our robot here that is perfect and what we will want to do with it Apologies, uh, we will want to run a simulation of that robot, right? So I'll go to is it commands? No, it's not commands. Is it components? Yes, it's components program simulation super Click click Is it though? Wait, no, first we need to create a program, right? Yes, yes, and then we run the simulation. So forget about that for just a second. My bad. Instead, we use um, create program, create program. Yeah, there we go, create program. This guy right here, which will ask us, uh, ask us for a program name. Sure, we can just slash slash. Um, I'll just write uh, my name. Uh, uh, hello? Slash slash. Oh, there we go. That's that's just going to be kind of. Or uh, I can even do get minus k um, one or or test one. There we go. 
that is the name of my program uh, for the robot then it's going to ask me for the robot system we have one so i'll just connect it like so it's going to ask us for t1 and t2 these are targets targets are the planes right so so the targets well they're not the planes but they are kind of coordinates of the of the planes i'll explain that in a second we ignore it for now we just check if there is anything else that we can plug in before we kind of work on the targets initial commands optional list of commands that will run at the start of the program nah we're fine uh, you can have like a, a command that will heat up the wire automatically in our case we'll just kind of click a button and it's gonna heat up you know manually so so that's fine uh, then here we have optional list of indices to split the program into multiple files no we will not be splitting we will be using a single file for the whole um, cutting sequence so that's fine and the last one is step size distance in millimeters to step through linear motions used for error checking and program simulation so this is basically how how accurate is the error checking uh, during the when you will going to be simulating i believe we're using like two millimeters here no we are using one millimeter okay that's fine so every millimeter it's going to check if it's colliding with anything or not okay so we have that done now let's uh, create a very simple program not program here but uh, a very simple uh target right uh, for for this pro uh, for this uh robot to actually you know, move along and, and use so a target uh, where is it where is it uh pulse components create frame speed create target create target create some and modifies a target right click for additional inputs okay so we create target right which asks us for a plane well actually we want more inputs so i'll right click on the target i'll say motion input or is it speed i believe it's motion speed and tool and zone i also want zone i want so many things let me check if uh, what are the things that are actually useful oh all of them i guess because motion tool speed zone yeah all, all of the ones that i said we actually want to use so i will do exactly that right click tool or or uh, sorry uh, motion tool speed zone motion tool speed zone okay so motion says is set to be a joint no 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 we use linear motion for this um do I explain it? No, I don't explain it. I don't think I need to explain it. Uh, just trust me. <laughs> we used linear motion. It asks us for planes, target planes, which we have. We have a crap ton of them right here. We will need to kind of join them up and clean them up nicely, but we do have a bunch of planes. That is true. Um, Let's, let's just use, let's see, this, this guy right here, right? So uh, this is like the, I hide this. This is like the, the, the first plane and I, I will hide everything except that single plane. Let's say this is our target, right? For, for this robot arm to move into. Okay, I will just connect this plane to the target plane input like so just for testing purposes and i can kind of move this a, a little bit towards the towards the left like that okay so target already starts working but we still need a few uh bits and pieces here so the first one is tool okay tool um we don't have a tool well i have a tool you don't have a tool well let, let's say it like this I will give it Yeah, I will give you the, this whole thing. Copy 
Just a second. Paste. There we go. Please do not mess around with these values here for the tool and do not look inside. So do not do not do this. Um, it's a wire cutter making tool, right? And it's basically just going to create a tool uh, for you, um, which you can use. So I'll just save this uh, save document. Uh, for now, I'll just save it to desktop and I'll just call it AAHN15 wire cutter. It's save. There we go. Link in the video description for the tool as well. <laughs> okay. So we are, uh, once you have it, uh, once you're kind of downloaded it, you just kind of select it, cop co control C to copy. You go into your file by navigating through this top right corner. Go into your file. Control V to paste and drag it near where you need it. There we go. So that tool is actually I can show it to you. Let me hide the robot. Let me show you the tool real fast. That is not the tool. Let me show you the tool real fast. This is how the tool looks, right? Oh, by the way, we, we made a much, much wider tool. Um, the, the, the person in charge of the wire cutter, um, not just the wire cutter, but of all, all of the robots, uh, was, was very kind and, and made us a pretty damn large, uh, pretty damn large tool that will uh, take care of most of the, uh, most of the angles for, for cutting. But also, the problem is that it's pretty damn large. Keep that in mind. <laughs> um, that that might be a little bit tricky to uh, to work with. Either way, that is our uh, not not to work with, but rather to not hit hit anything with it. Right? Either way, that's our tool, and the target is look, waiting for a tool, so we just kind of give it. There we go. We can move move forward with this and I will just make some space here <clears throat> like that. Next step is speed. So speed is done in millimeters per second and for the cutting speed for now we will be using five millimeters per second. So five, I will just name this. So you just right click the panel and you type in cut speed cut speed so it's going to be pretty slow cutting this is important because we are still not used to uh, how much tension can the tool take uh, so it's important to cut very slow five millimeters per second is slow enough and zone of uh, approximation zone in millimeters is uh, with two millimeters don't care about that so i'll just say two and i will just right click and call it uh, zone one i'm not explaining this just use two millimeters that's fine it's gonna work all right so we have our target well right now it's just a single target it's gonna be a little bit more boring but that's fine so we have our target and that comes into t1 like that. Why are you orange? Warnings in program. Okay. We will check the warnings. That is fine. Um, oh, right, right. It's, it's, it's going to be, of course, it's going to be a warning uh, because we are not homing the, the wire cutter. So it has no idea what its initial position is. That is fine. Um, let's run a simulation. Still, let's run a simulation, why not? So right now I can go to components, simulation, uh, program simulation, there we go. Uh, I'll connect program to program, like that. Oh, that was fast. <laughs> I'll, uh, wait, do I need? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. So, so all I need is just a slider for the time. So, 0 0.5000, 0, maybe. Uh, so, it's just a slider between 0 and 1 with a crap ton of, of numbers after the, uh, after the comma. And here you can see that as I'm moving the time slider, it doesn't change. The reason why it doesn't change is because we only have a single plane. So, of course, it doesn't change. It doesn't understand um, that, that we need more. Um, it, it understands this as its resting position, and its initial kind of, this is where I start, right? And then it's asking, okay, and from where should I go? And you're not giving it another plane, so it just kind of stays there, right? So that, that means that time is not, you know, it doesn't work. Um, let's make it work. Let's not give it, give it a single plane, but rather let's give it multiple planes. So I will use merge, the merge tool, uh, and I'll use the merge to plug all of the planes into a single list, right? So we start with this, the first plane that has been moved up, right? We start with this, that goes into D1. Then, so it reaches this plane, right? Then it needs to start the cut, so it goes around the cut, and once it's finished, <clears throat> it will move into the last plane, which is here. <clears throat> Sorry. So let's do that. That is uh, that the first uh, plane comes in here. That's from where it starts cutting. Then we have all of the planes that are here. All of them will connect to D2, like that. And then we have the last guy, the last plane, which connects to D3, like that. And I can just kind of erase the D4, or we, we can keep the D4 as well, that doesn't matter. So we have D1, D2, D3. Um, I will just, just to be safe, uh, I will right click and flatten all of this data. You don't need to do this, but uh, I, I prefer doing it this way, just, just to clean things up. And now instead of a single plane for the target, we will use this list of planes. Like that. Oop. Like that. There we go. Now let's see how it works. So as we move, move it along the time, we can see that the robot indeed makes the cut. Whee! It's still orange though. Uh, the reason why it's orange is because the first line of code needs to be in degrees rather than coordinates and we are not giving it that. We will give it that in just a second. But we know for now we know that it works. Let me make it a little bit prettier. So the output is meshes. So I will just grab a custom preview real fast. Custom preview for the mesh swatch. Let's make it gray. Well, I say pretty, but I mean not so intense. Something like that. Something like that seems seems okay. Okay, so we have that that going, right? If it doesn't work for you, uh, it might be because uh, the positioning is incorrect, right? Because the the robot cannot reach uh, where the the shape is. So what you can do is you show so you show all of this <clears throat> all of this stuff and you can move your box together with all of the lines to a position where you actually think the robot will reach to to do the cut right i have already done that and that's probably not too pedagogical of me i have probably like kind of done that and in my case, the gap is, um, let me just check. Oh yeah, I can't do that. Just a second. Uh, can we do it in the front view though? Yes, we can. So the gap, gap is around 400 millimeters from the side of the robot. And uh, 
the height. What am I doing? <laughs> and the element itself is 200 millimeters above ground, right? Um, so it's on some sort of a pedestal that's 200 millimeters high. So 400 from the from this area of the robot and 200 above, approximately. And that seems to work. Okay, so we have that done. Um, I will hide everything again so that I don't accidentally move things around. And we will kind of continue on working on this. So ignore the warnings for now. We will look into them in just a tiny bit. Okay. Let's uh, now put a pin in this, right? So let, let's uh, ignore this just for a second. Rather, I will be deleting this merge because I will want to have a little bit different type of, of, of situation going on for the robot. So I'll delete this merge, right? And the robot disappears because now it doesn't have any targets. That's fine. Uh, we are still working with, with these planes. So now this is where we want to have like a start position from, uh, of the robot. And it starts cutting from, uh, or starts moving from that position to the first plane here. So it moves, then starts the cut, finishes the cut, moves to the last plane, and then moves back to that start position, right? So we always want to have some sort of a single plane that is always located in the start, um, in that particular starting position of the robot. How the hell do we do that? Well, the trick is that we need to get a we need to get some sort of a plane out of, of this. Um, sorry, uh, we need some sort of plane to get it out of this particular robot. And I'm just thinking, is it possible to? I'm just thinking about the fastest way of how to do it. <clears throat> Tell you what, what we can do is we can create a, a rectangle, just a normal rectangle here. 0, 10, 10, whatever. Just a rectangle, Nof nothing fancy. Well, actually, let me make it bigger, like that. <clears throat> and I will reference it in, in into Grasshopper as a curve because it's a rectangle, right? So it's a curve. It's at one curve, like that. And I will um, extract a plane from that rectangle. Plane. Why is it not centered? I want it to be centered. Um, sure, whatever. It's, it's not centered. We're, we're fine with that. And we will use that plane as our target. Like so. So you can see that the robot. <laughs> well, I mean, sure, I guess the robot is kind of, you know, it, it's breaking apart completely, but it is reaching that plane. Um, the thing that I'm going to be doing with this rectangle is I will move it out somewhere close to, uh, to where my box is. Right, so I know that my box is somewhere here. So I'm just moving it along the x-axis. I will, of course, rotate it around 180 degrees, flip it around so that the robot arm can actually reach it properly. I'll move it up to something like this, and I will rotate it 90 degrees like that. And now we will find a position for this robot arm. 
like a proper position for this robot arm to use to be used as a starting point okay so i'm just using this rectangle to kind of drive the, the the robot arm and i think something like can we just do something like this i think something like this is fine even do a little bit lower yeah something like that i think something like that is okay uh, so that is going to be our our starting position, right? That rectangle right there. I will not be changing it anymore. This is fine. You know, I, I want it to be this way. So what I'm going to do is where I have the plane, where you know, which I've generated from this rectangle, where I have the plane, I will right click it and I'll choose internalize data. Oh, it's snowing. It's snowing inland. Not in Lund, in Malmo. Huh. Wait, wait a minute. Okay. Nice. Okay. Anyway, uh, so I'm going to internalize data. Click. You can see that the wire gets disconnected. Uh, that's because now that plane lives inside of this component, right? It doesn't it's not generated from the curve, it rather lives inside of this component. So I don't need the curve component anymore, right? And I don't need the curve here anymore. I have the plane here. Okay, that is important. So now I can uh, actually disconnect this because now I know that this is my resting position of the, of the robot, this plane right here. And I'll move it back to, to my script. Okay. We are slowly building it up. Once we've done this, it's going to be quite easy to just kind of make a bunch of copies for each cut. So don't worry. Uh, so we have our initial plane. That's the start. We have our first plane uh, from where it starts cutting. Then we have all of our cut planes. Actually, let me create a plane component. Plane component and just drag, uh, like connect the rotate 3D to the plane component and drag it out here just so that visually it's easier for you to follow, you know, what's what. And I can even group this. So I will say this is our start plane or uh, let's call it resting position. Um, end of move start of cut. So between resting position and the move, uh, and, and sorry, between this plane and the, this plane, it's going to go fast. It's going to kind of move fast. And once it reaches this plane, it's going to start going slow because it's going to start cutting, right? So resting position, then end of move, start of cut, then cut. So it's just cutting. And then this is going to be end of cut, start of move, right? So once it's finished here, it needs to make a full loop back to the initial plane. Okay, so we have these uh, four, uh, four components here. Uh, let's work with them. Let us work with them. So this is where Pufferfish comes in handy. Um, I believe, yes, this is where Pufferfish comes in handy. So what we're going to do is I am going to create a bunch of average planes in between, between the resting position and the, 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 the first plane here, between these two, and also between this and this right between these two as well so i am going to say um to create a bunch of curves in between we use tween uh sorry not curves planes to create a bunch of planes in between we use tween planes uh component oh my god um i believe it's tween between two planes tween two planes 
we use that, which will ask us, uh, ask us for plane to twin from. So we're going to twin from the initial resting position towards, towards the end of move, start of cut position, right? And it just kind of gives us a plane in the middle, but we kind of want more than that. So I'm going to create range. Range. Yes, there we go. So range just gives us like a series of numbers between zero and one. So it's going to create a bunch of planes in between. And now we can see how smooth this is. It's nice, right? So we have all of these. That's great. And now we need to do the same thing. Win two planes. Win two planes. And now we twin between the end of cut, between this plane right here, which goes into A, we twin back to the resting position right here. That. And I'll just use the same range, why not? And then reuse the component. So now we tween it back. And of course, we still need to use the, you know, in, in between those, we, we still have the cut, <laughs> right? Okay. We're getting there. We are getting there. So now we have these planes to, uh, through which the robot arm is going to move fast. Then these planes, through which the robot arm is going to, oh wait, not just these, sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, we need to, we need also this and the last one, this. So we do need to merge, use merge on the end of move, cut, start a move, just like we did before, you know, merge those three, um, flatten, 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 right, okay, good, uh, a hiccup, but now we're fine, hide everything here, we have the merge, okay, so again, let's go again, <laughs> start of uh, the, the initial movement, which goes fast, cutting, which goes slow, end of movement, or ending movement, back to the initial point, which goes fast, right? So we have two separate speeds that we will need to deal with, which means that we will deal with two separate targets. Let me double check if I'm not lying. Uh, Antoine, target, yes, yes, we will use two separate Targets and why is data there? Oh, that's because of the tool. Sure, whatever. Uh, so we will be using targets, a bunch of them. So let me disconnect target from here, from T1, <clears throat> and drag it next to next to these, right? Next next to these. So we will have two targets that have the speed of, let's say, move speed, and one target from here that has the speed set to be cut speed, like this. So I can already kind of do, do it this way, like that, because this is already kind of done, right? Already set up. And next up, what I'm going to just do is I'll just take the target, copy, paste here, I'll take the target, copy, paste, yeah, like that. And I will connect tween between two planes to the first, to the top target, and tween between two planes to the bottom target, like so. All of them are kind of connected to the tool, casually. Uh, actually, it's going to make so many wires. So what I'm going to do is I will create a data component here, data like that. And I'll just kind of connect, uh, like run through 
run all of the wires through the data component just so that it's a little bit more uh, clean. And now this is way too many inputs because there's so many inputs that are being repeated. So I'm going to delete linear for both of these and I'll just kind of co uh, connect linear. Oh, come on. Reconnect linear uh, to all three. So I'm just using one input to drive all three of these. Then for the speed, even though this is like cut speed, both of these, uh, the top and the bottom, will use the move speed. God damn it, my phone is just going to town, huh? Um, so we have cut speed and we have move speed here. So I will just delete one of them. I will change this, the name of this to move speed like that. And I will increase it to, let's do 50, like 10 times faster. It's still not fast. It can go pretty damn fast, like 200, but uh, let's not. <laughs> let's, let's not flay around the robot arm uh, too fast. So 50 is okay. Move speed 50, and I'll just kind of reconnect it to the bottom, right? Like so. Okay, so we have move speed, cut speed, and then zone is the same for all three. So I can just kind of reconnect the wire, like del delete the wire and, and reconnect it like so. Um, now for the positioning, let's just kind of do it this way, I guess. I know it's a mess, and this is what Grasshopper is great, great for, creating a mess. Okay, we are so close. Um, so target, target, target. We have the first uh, set of targets for a linear movement towards the cut. Then we have a set of targets for the cut, and then a set of targets for linear movement back to the initial position. Target, target, target. Okay, we need to merge them into one big happy family, I think. Double checking. Yes. Yes, we do. Oh, this is so nice. Okay. Merge. First set of targets. Second set of targets. Third set of targets. And just click on the small negative icon there to remove the D4 input. That's our merge. And just to be on the safe side, I will right click and flatten the inputs again. Just like doing that, just to make sure that everything is in the single list. And now let's drag our robot simulation here and connect the output of the merge to the T1 input here. It's still a warning, that's fine. Uh, it still has a warning, that's fine, that's expected. Let's run the simulation. See how much faster? Like I, I'm running the, let me increase the slider size. I'm running the simulation, uh, like I'm, I'm moving the slider in, the consist, in a consistent way. And if I move the time in a consistent way, it goes really fast and then it slows down super slow goes back in goes back out and moves back here <laughs> like that okay troubleshooting by the way of, of what can go wrong is going to be done at the end of the video so if you already have problems you can just check uh, at the end of it just, just kind of stay stick around until the end of the video and uh, I'll, I'll try to kind of address most of the issues that can arise. So we have that done. Uh, for now, uh, for move speed, I will also use five, uh, just so that the slider is consistent, right? And I can kind of see everything that's going to be doing. Um, and as I'm kind of running the simulation, I always check if the frame is going to hit anything on the robot. Um, one thing to note is that there's a bunch of wires dangling here. 
so that that is a like a soft spot here for for the robot, which is not modeled, but that is something that that is there indeed. Okay, we have that done. I need a break. I need a break. So uh, break time. Okay, okay, we are back. So what do we have here? I already forgot. Uh, we have the initial system in place, we have the simulation in place. Oh, we're super close to finishing up. And right now it's it's a little bit of a mess, but hopefully uh, as, as you'll be using this tool more and more, you will kind of understand the intricacies behind it. Um, so let's 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 move on from from here. Um, this target explain. Okay, so let's get rid of this uh, uh, error. So the warning that we get, it's not an error, it's a warning. The warning that we get is, um, it says that first target in robot zero changed to a joint motion using axis rotations. Uh, and also that position and orientation don't change for 11 and 46. That is fine. That, that, is, that is something that we will, we will fix. Actually, yeah, let, let me create a panel and just connect the errors here. So we have three errors or three warnings. Uh, first one, we need a homing sequence uh, for this. Uh, that is something we will implement. And second and third one is uh, just the fact that um, we right now have this, or wait, which one is it? Yes, this and this plane, these two planes are duplicated. duplicated. So the way I'm going to fix it is by where I have the tween between two planes here. My range is between zero and one. In, in this case, I'll just change the range to be slash slash uh, zero point one two. 0.9 so it doesn't start tweening uh, 0 0.1 to 0 0.9 so it doesn't start tweening the planes from the start and the end but rather it well pff, <laughs> connected to the, to the wrong input but rather it kind of gives it a little bit of a gap um, and that should fix it for us hopefully Yes, now we only see one one error here, one one mistake here. That that is good. That is good. Okay. So we we fixed that part by just giving it a range that is not between zero and one. And now for the last part, the the last warning, it's uh, it needs a homing sequence. So or or the homing position. So here it says first target in robot zero. So this is our robot zero change to a joint motion using axis rotations rather than a Cartesian uh, uh, rather than Cartesian rotations can I show you how that looks yes I can by showing you the code so this is how the code looks like that's whatever blah 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 and here this is where it starts moving so you can see that first one is move absolute j uh, jog uh, to somewhere doesn't matter and this is described through a series of rotations rather than through a series of uh, uh, rather than through coordinates and everything else is you can see much larger numbers that is in millimeters move l uh, move linear that is just uh, three coordinates x y z right for where it needs to move from that starting position so if we don't give it a initial setup for what is the home what what is the initial starting position it's just going to use the first plane as the uh, as the home we don't want that we do want the robot to have the initial sequence starting with uh, some sort of a uh, angles that that we we will use so i am going to first check my notes and yeah, that's going to be quite quite simple to do so we are going to give it a target 
we are going to give it an, an additional target. So I'm just going to say, yeah, let's just create one. Uh, why not? Target. Uh, create target. And for this one, we will use... Wait, do we need to use all of them? Just double checking. Uh, tool speed zone. Yeah, okay, so for, for this one, we don't need motion input, right? So we will just be using tool speed zone, right? Tool speed zone. So tool is going to be, well, that is going to be our tool straight up like that. Uh, target plane is going to be. I mean, that's that's awkward. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, my bad, my bad. It's not going to be target plane here. Right click. Um, instead, we will use. Is it configuration? No. Is it? Yeah. Okay. So you just need to untick. Um, you just need to untick the Cartesian target uh, tick mark, and now it's going to to work properly, right? So you you need to see J here. So this is again how how my tick marks look like. You need to see something similar, or not similar, the same. Okay, so this is right now, it's asking us for joint rotations and radians. So this robot right here, it has six joints in total. So this is the first joint, and around this joint, it can move in... Um, it, it can just kind of rotate. Um, how do I show this? Let me actually just say, this robot has six joints, right? So we will have merge of six numbers for joint rotations one two three four five six perfect right and let me uh just connect it like so for now just so that you can see and let me connect the target to the t1 input here instead of this merge just uh, for me to show you how the robot will move when I give it all of these uh, joints a value. So for now, I'm going to give all of the joints value of zero, slash slash zero. Like that, like that, like that, that and that. And it's red. Why is it red? Not set to instance of an object. Uh, why? Should work. Oh right, uh, this is not enough for it. the The way right now uh, it receives information is like that: a list of zeros, right? Instead, what we want it to to get is zero comma zero comma zero comma zero comma zero comma zero. One two three one two three. Yeah, we want this instead of this. How do we do that? Well, we need to join this text into a single line and each of the each of the text pieces needs to be separated by a comma so we will use join text or text join tool like that and for the join uh, separator we will just use slash slash comma not point not dot comma panel there we go so now if I feed this in, I can see exactly the same thing, right? Uh, what I want. And now I'll connect it to the join. And this is how it looks like, right? With, with the, all of the values set to zero. So it's not, you know, this is not a perfectly, <laughs> uh, not a perfect uh, resting position. So now we need to kind of investigate. And let's do... Let's do this one by one. By the way, we don't need these D7, so I'm just going to remove it. D1. Let me create a slider uh, that goes between minus 180, dot, dot, 180. That is in degrees. And let me connect it to D1. Right? 
And now if I scroll the slider, you can see that it moves way too fast for some reason, right? That is way too fast. The reason uh, for that is that joint positions are, uh, you can see here, joint rotations in radians. So it's not in degrees, but rather in radians. And I absolutely hate working in radians. So what I'm going to do is I will still give it an input of degrees, but rather I will convert the degrees to radians with a node that is called radians. Connect degrees here, connect radians here. And now if I move it, now it moves fine, right? So this is our first joint and I can like here the first joint can indeed be zero that's fine that's fine for me so i am going to disconnect this and i will reconnect zero to okay i'll reconnect zero to here then second joint is this right so this joint actually i want it to be rotated a little bit back right a little bit backwards so i'm thinking wait let me check what kind of angle i gave it yeah i gave it 90 degrees so i will give it 90 degrees here so that is going to be 90 degrees then let me just uh, make a copy of this copy paste for the third joint let's see what the third joint does okay third joint does that Right? So I'm not sure if we need to, do we need to do anything with the third joint? No, the third joint can stay as zero, right? If it stays at zero, it just will be kind of horizontal. That's perfect for us, that's what we want. So third joint is zero. Fourth joint rotates like so. That is also, that also stays as zero. Fifth joint rotates like so. That is actually something that we need to uh, that we need to adjust. So I want it to be uh, I want the frame to be horizontal, and it's going to be minus thirty degrees for it to be horizontal. Come on! By the way, if you want to just add a normal value, you just double click on the slider and type in minus thirty. There we go. So now it's horizontal here. And let's look at the fifth, uh, or rather the sixth joint, the last one. Connect there. That is the last joint, and it can rotate the tool like so. We will keep it at zero. Minimize that. So that is it. That, this is our homing position. So it's not resting position, it's homing position. This is like when the robot... Uh, stops like completely when it before it begins it will have this position and then when it stops uh, when it finishes it will have this position resting position is here homing position is here okay so that is our target now where do we want to we have our initial target here or our homing target here and i'll actually just group this and call this homing like that and we have our let's make a let's move this a little bit out like so and then we have our um like movement and cutting targets here right located here so where do we insert the homing target well it needs to be right at the start and right at the end right of, of, of the whole sequence so we will use list insert it's probably something else insert items insert items insert items is going to ask us okay so give me a list to which i need to insert the items into sure this is going to be our merge so that's the list then it's going to ask us for okay what kind of items do you want me to insert i will just say that target for the home, like so. 
Then it's going to ask me, okay, what are the indices at which I'm inserting the targets? I want it to be at the start and at the end, right? So from previous part, we know, where is it? Where is it? That start is zero and is minus one, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'll just create a panel, slash, slash, enter. And in the panel, double click, I will type in zero, enter, minus one and click anywhere else on the screen, zero minus one. I will right click the panel and choose multi-line data here. There we go. Multi-line data is important to, to not have it, right? So, so just make sure that you see something like this. I will connect it to the index here. And now my, uh, my targets, are going to be, it will start with this, then it will jump into all of these targets here, and then it will end with this as well. So let me connect that to uh, E1, like so. And it still, it still gives me a warning, why stop? The targets have their speed set to default. Oh yeah, sorry, uh, we didn't set the speed here. Uh, for, for the robot. So I'm going to borrow the movement speed from here, copy and paste it here. That is going to be our speed and also the zone. I'm also going to borrow zone one. That is going to be our, our zone here as well. Like that. Uh, this is getting a little bit, yeah, that's actually not that bad. And I'll just select both of these, right click on the group, and I'll choose add to group so that they are like part, part of the group. Okay. No errors, yay, or no uh, warnings, yay. Okay, let's run the simulation. This was backwards, and now let's, let's run it properly. Time. goes around, comes back up, and once it's done that, it just finishes up the movement into the starting position. Perfect. We are good to go. We are good to go with all of the remaining cuts. We are done. We are basically done. At this point, it's just copying a bunch of stuff. So before I do that, I will want to kind of clean this up and kind of uh, have everything arranged properly. So the first thing is um, this entwine, loft, and bang, right? So th this portion right here. This portion right here basically says uh, create separate lofts and then uh, get them as separate outputs. Right? So these are the separate outputs and I'm working right now on only on the first loft. Then we have surface, isocurve, blah, 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 all of this good stuff until rotate 3D. Right until here. This one. And actually I'll just join up the, the construct plane and line as well. <clears throat> Group that. Move this back a bit. So. I'll call this um, create a bunch of aligned planes following the cutting direction of the surface. Right? So that's what, what we've done here. We got the surface and by the end of it, we got all of the planes that were following the cut of the surface. Um, then we have uh, here, up until the targets, I'll group this and call this create all planes, play, play, planes, um, or, or not all, but create uh, planes that go from resting position 
not homing. I, I probably need to do caps lock here. Resting position to cutting for to first first cutting position and once the cut is done then backwards <laughs> wonderful sentence okay uh, so basically here um, I, I'm just describing that we have this row of planes going to the cut towards the cut and then this is the cut and then once the cut is done they go back to the resting position right then here we have uh, the linear motion with the data and blah 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 and everything gets merged um, this is just great targets with different move speeds for the move movement slash cutting uh, instructions 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 so by the end of this we have converted the planes into instructions for the speed, the zone, and uh, what kind of motion it's going to have, and, and, and so on. That is just the tool. We don't need that to group that. That is insert. And the insert can just be kind of here awkwardly. That's fine. OK, we are, oh, yeah, OK. And the last one is, uh, well, I guess I can just kind of group this get the correct robot uh, that's create program and simulate it uh, create the program and simulate it okay so that is done now the question is um, how do we repeat it for each other cut well, we just copy it. <laughs> That's as easy as it is. So for now, I'm, I'm going to actually, actually let, let's, yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm just talking to myself. For now, I'm just going to kind of separate it a little bit further to, to give it some space here. And I'll move the tool quite far down because I know that I'll be copying this whole portion downwards quite a bit. <clears throat> And the portion that I'm going to be copying is going to be my uh, plane creation, my um, plane creation for the movement towards the cut, and my target creation, right? So that is going to be copied. I'll select all of this. Control-C, Control-V, move it downwards like that. And now instead of... Um, surface zero zero i'll use surface zero one here so that is my second surface of the cut like that right and just for a tiny bit let me hide everything about the surface uh, the, the first initial surface and let's look at the second surface here just to see if it's going to work all i need to do now to, to check is where this merge is going in I need to connect this merge instead, right? So it goes into the insert. So let me just drag out a wire towards the insert here. That, and this is red. Why? Why are you red? Oh, it is red because it's uh, it cannot reach because it it crams the robot into the um, the, the arm right uh, so so the arm kind of falls into itself to be able to reach one of the planes um that's fine uh, we can fix it by making slight adjustments either to the positioning of the element or to uh to to some factors of of the planes here so let's see if we can do that uh factor 205 what if we reduce for you know for this one we keep it at, at 205 what if we reduce it here to something lower. Ah, 
see how it snapped back? That means that it suddenly uh, it, it 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 does work. So I'll reduce it even further, just just on to be on the safe side. Let's run the simulation now. So it's not going to be that tight. That seems to be okay. Then it goes and does this thing. Hmm. Why is this angled so weirdly? This is weird. These, uh, these axes are not angled properly at all. Let's see. Let's see what's up with that. So to do that, uh, to kind of investigate, I will hide everything and I'll start going through the tools. So ISO curves, of course, is going to be fine. Curve. We do get the curves. We get the divide. That works. We flip the divide. Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, then we create polylines. That is clean. And the tool definitely doesn't follow the polylines, as we can see. Um, we create planes. And the planes, for some reason, are not aligning perfectly with the polylines. Why is that? You can see here that the polyline goes here and the plane is kind of just horizontal. Uh, that is not normal. That shouldn't be the case. Okay, okay, okay. So, sorry about that. We forgot to do one thing, or rather, um, we need to implement one thing. I didn't forget it, I just didn't do it. <laughs> um, so there needs to be correction. There needs to be a plane correction right in, being, uh, right in between this plane XY creation here and the rotate 3D uh, here. Right? Be between these two, there needs to be a slight plane cor correction so that the plane vector, y vector, or y, di y direction of the plane, aligns with the lines here. Or rather, let me show you the lines. Yeah, so that it basically aligns with these lines here. Right? That's important. The reason why the correction is needed is because we are using global vector here for the x. So it kind of forces the x-axis to go down, which means that the y-axis cannot perfectly follow the direction of the surface anymore. So there needs to be a slight correction. So for this, uh, l l let's do it this way. Um, I will, yeah, let's work on this. I will delete this group, right? Just, just the group. And I will create a little bit of a gap between these two, this plane and rotate 3D, these two components. So I'll select all of this and kind of move it back like so. And this is where our correction is going to take place. So this plane will need to be rotated. Rotate 3D will need to be slightly rotated so that all of the Y axes align with the lines here, right? So rotate 3D. The geometry that's going to be rotated is going to be our planes here. So that's, that's fine. That's easy. The angle though, we don't know the angle. We need to get it out of here. And the way we will calculate the angle is by um, calculating an angle between two vectors. One vector is going to be of the plane itself the y-axis of each of these planes, and the other uh, vector is going to be the tangent right here, of, of this line right here, right? So the tangent we have here, but we don't have any way of how to, uh, how to get the y-axis of each of these planes. So what I'm going to do is I will just deconstruct Construct plane. I'll deconstruct this plane or these planes 
in two separate entities and maybe let's look at less of them so i'll reduce the count just so that it's kind of more easy for you to see so i have deconstructed these planes into their uh, components from which they are assembled so uh, origin x y and z vectors right and i will just measure the angle angle wait is it the correct one angle angle compute the angle between two vectors this guy right here i will measure the angle between so we need to measure the angle between this which is the y axis like so and this which is the tangent like so and we get the angle from there which i will just feed it into the angle input of the rotation like so center of rotation is going to be our origin point and axis of rotation is going to be the z axis of our planes like so that's it now now we have it kind of cleaned up a little bit better and now i can actually um well let me hide all of this now all of the planes have been corrected and they are aligning properly and i will connect now this to the geometry input here like so and hopefully now when they get rotated yes they are rotated properly and now if we check it with the with the simulation it's red <laughs> why why are you red when do you become red you become red here it bends too much it bends too much in in, in inwards by too much um oh yeah yeah the I, I forgot the to, to turn down the slider we already did this part um so now it's gonna work well 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 okay that works so there was like this this these three components that were missing and now we have them uh, and there's no way to assemble them in a clean fashion. So I'm just going to kind of have a mess here. Um, sure. Let me group this. How did we create a bunch of aligned planes following the cutting direction of the surface? Create a bunch of aligned planes fall, fall following the direction of the surface. Okay, we have that. So this is our brand new working method. This is the old shitty method. So I'm going to just, actually, I'm just going to delete uh, the whole top portion like that. And I will just kind of control C, control V, move it back here, plug in zero, zero into the surface. So now we have the first surface, we have the second surface, everything's neat and dandy. Let's run the simulation on the first surface just to make sure that everything works so i'm just kind of switching around these wires um run the simulation yeah you're good you're good you're fine you're good uh, are you fine you seem to be fine yeah you're fine you're good okay that's good uh i'll increase the resolution here to let's do 33 planes for this cut and for this cut we don't really need that many so i'll just kind of stick to let's see 15 planes something like that that should be enough <sighs> okay we have four cuts in total right so i'm going to select this group and i'll just make it make two copies of it copy copy like that that's for each cut and I'll connect the wires up 
accordingly. So let me just move this to somewhere in the middle, just so that the wires are not too long. And 0, 02 comes in here, 0, 03 comes in here. Let's investigate. So let's look at 0, 03 now, or, or the third cut. Not 0, 03, the third cut. Like that. Let's see. Goes down. This is the cut. Why are you not following the cut? What's wrong with you? <laughs> okay. More investigation. So let me hide everything. Let me just check if the fourth cut is going to be fine while we're at it. I'll just connect the fourth cut here. Uh, run the simulation through the fourth cut. That seems fine. Uh, the fourth cut seems fine. So it's just the third cut that's also giving us problems. So let's look at it. Third cut connects to here. <sighs> Rotate 3D, that's fine. It's fine. Okay, so everything seems to be okay. Uh, why are you still being a dick? I'm just now hiding things so that I can only focus on the this cut right here that is bad. Uh, so let's look at the curve. The curves are fine, the division is fine, the polar lines are great. Uh, the planes are, uh, where are the planes? The planes are weird. No, they are actually fine. They are aligned properly. Well, they do need to have that uh, alignment fixed though. So why is that alignment not being fixed? Oh, that's because it's rotating it away. Um, it's rotating it away from the from the cut. So while the angle is correct, it's rotating it in the incorrect direction. Um, I'm wondering if there is a possibility on how to skip the angle and instead use something else for it. So I'll look at align, um, align uh, vectors, align planes, align, align vertices. There's no like align vectors thing. Okay, let's take a look at, wait, we start with this, we end with this. We calculate. Do we need to calculate in this plane? We do. We do need to calculate it in that plane. I made I made the boo boo. I'm sorry. Um, so we do. Uh, I, I didn't add the third input to the angle. We need the plane. Uh, the, the, the starting plane, which needs to be corrected, all of our angles to be calculated in that particular plane. So that, that is correct. Like that. And like that. I really hope that this is the last adjustment. I know that you hope so as well. Um, well, it's, it's not that I... I'm sorry, because this is a research project, but still. Still, um, okay. So the cut here is now correct. Let's look at other cuts, if they are still correct. And then if they are, we will... We will finish up. Okay, so this looks like it's correct. The second cut. Yeah, 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 it's correct. Third uh, or first cut. Please be correct. Please be correct. Please be correct. Please be correct. 
Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, looks correct. Like, everything is aligning. Yeah, that's good. And the fourth cut. That's too many, too many things to look at. Hide. Fourth cut. That. Uh, last rotation of the planes. That. Down. That's perfect. It's good. Yep, that looks fine. That looks indeed fine. Okay, I think I think now we have a perfect tool like that. That will never make mistakes. Famous last words. Um, okay, so we have this this going on. Now the only thing left to do is join everything together into one sequence. First it do, does the first cut, then it does the second cut, then it does the third cut, then it does the fourth cut, right? Join it up. Joining it up is done through merge. Merge. Comes in here. Comes in here. Comes in here. And comes in here. There we go. We have four cuts. For targets, for four cuts, joined in. Then all of it joins into list. If you see a dashed line here, uh, then you need to flatten, flatten, flatten all of the inputs. But uh, it seems to work, so I will not be doing that. So all of the cuts get merged in, go into here. Uh, let's take a look. Let's take a look. So uh, for this to kind of look nice, I'm thinking of uh, what are we going to look at? Let's look at the lines, right? Let's look at the lines. So I'm just enabling the preview of the lines here. For the cut, I'll hide the surface for now so that it's not in the way. And technically, this tool should now simulate perfectly. OK. Zoop, zoom back slowly. Rotates. I'm also, by the way, checking if it's going to be too close of a call, if it's going to hit itself with the frame as well. Uh, so, that is it aligned? It is aligned. Yeah, boy. It's aligned. So now it goes back. It goes back to the resting position. Click and immediately jumps to the next position. Makes the second cut, still aligned perfectly. Resting position again, third cut. Mm, it's a little bit tight here, but I think that's gonna be fine. Uh, that's the third position. Aligned, perfect. Goes back, fourth position. And for the fourth position, seems like there's a little bit of a boo boo. See how it's um, actually? Let me uh, let me grab the the the, the box here. Uh, show show the stock. To to begin cutting the third position, it's going to jam into the the model this is exactly why we use the factors for for movement uh like why we move the the start of the cut a little bit higher up so i'm going to move it slightly up oh that's that's too much that's too much that's like 600 millimeters um, and let me take a look at where 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 it's where these are being placed. That's too much. Let's do two hundred. Yep, that should be fine. So this this movement upwards will force the robot. Uh, where where is the simulation? Will force the robot to first kind of move to that to that height and then go straight down. And then start the cut, right? So it's it's never going to kind of cram into the box. That is important. 
and then it just goes and does the thing perfect done okay oh my god we are we are so close so close okay so this is done um this is done let me just to so that it, it doesn't lag i will select all of my uh stuff that i have here from the previous tutorial uh that was kind of showing us the final output uh of after the cuts have been made and let me disable the, the calculation of it because now i'm going to start moving the box around and showing you how what kind of problems you can have with the machine um so first one is actually also let me just i'll just place a point right here just so that when i move these guys around i know where to position it once once i'm done um, wh where it's actually gonna work so let's say your elements are too far right it's red here the program is red and it will simulate the program until uh, it can't anymore until it gets an error right so i'll just run the time that it kind of reaches tries to reach further 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 bam that hits itself can't can't continue right so this is an element that is too far away right um similar problem happens if the element is too close never mind doesn't happen why it should happen even closer yeah there we go okay same problem right actually it's going to do most of the cuts so it does most of the cuts right and then once it needs to do the last one which is super close by the way it's already like cramming in the tool into the robot but it's not registering it that is very important to keep an eye out for right if <clears throat> The tool is not going to be collision detected with the robot, apparently. So just uh, notice that. Right? But here it just says, yo, uh, I have, I can't kind of clamp any, any further. And this is basically it being too, too close. Then if it's too low, actually works if it's if it's uh, oh yeah, yeah yeah if it's too low uh then there there is one more thing that actually kind of sucks uh, let's say this is the the ground right and we run the simulation so it's doing the it's doing the nice cuts and whatnot right it's it's kind of messing around and everything's neat and dandy and it's doing the cut here except that bam right it hits the floor so this is also something that you need to take notice of um, i would suggest moving your elements um, like the positioning of your elements should be um, let's see let's let's think i'll try to to find it uh, cell pt lock I'll try to give you like correct measurements for for the positioning well first of all it needs to be centered right so i'll just move from the bottom center point right here to zero so it's moved to zero 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 here and i know that the size of it is um, 600 by 600 so i'll move it along the x-axis by 300 millimeters so now it's perfectly centered around the x y axis around the starting point right on the floor right so now let's move it out and i believe if we do um 600 around no more more much more than that uh so a meter probably 1000 yeah so 1000 one meter away from the zero 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 is where you want to have it in xy coordinates 
like that. It's still centered on the axis. And then 20 centimeters, so 200 millimeters above ground, like that. This is where you want to have it. And this is where the robot will have the best chance of, of cutting everything without hitting itself with this frame. And you always double check. Looks fine. You always double check if the frame gets dangerously too close uh, to, the, to the body of the robot. For instance, here. It's a little bit too close. If it does get a little bit too close, well, this is still fine, but uh, just to be safe, I would kind of move this away. Um, 50 centimeters, uh, 50 millimeters, something like that. But then it's red. Okay, so minus 50. Fine, fine, fine. We'll have it like that. Um, that's, that's fine. And then you finish, right? Okay, so usually the problems happen with positioning, right? Uh, where the robot can't reach you, but since you're running the simulation, the robot will show you at which point will it not be able to reach the, the object. That is the limitation. Um, cell PT, unlock, <laughs> lock, unlock, my god, delete. Okay, so we have that. Uh, last thing, that last, last thing before we call it a day is getting the getting this program uh, exported into a separate file, right? So I'm going to, in my desktop, I'll create a new, a new folder and I'll call it robot exports, right? I'll, I'll create that and for some reason it just crashed. Hello, what the? Oh my God, come on, uh, sure. While it's thinking about life, I will uh, I, I will I will fix the the grasshopper part of it. Um, here in the robot tab, that's not it. That is it. In the robot tab, under components, there is save program component here. So I'll save the pro program. It's going to ask me, okay, what's the program that you want to save? That's the the program is the program that I want to save. And for the file path, it's going to ask me for a folder. So I'm just going to say that slash slash. I'll just create a panel. I'll go back to my desktop where finally it stopped having a heart attack. I'll open up my folder. And here I'll just copy, control C. And I will paste that address to the folder into here, like that and connect it to the F input here. So now I believe it's already there, right? Uh, should be there. That's not it. That's not it. Robot exports. Yeah. There's a folder. There's my, there's my files for the robot cutting. For now, this is all that you need to do. This is it. So right now, this is like level two. Uh, you've leveled up. Um, now, now you are actually simulating the cutting with the robot and seeing what's possible and what's not in terms of your design. So you need to adjust your designs uh, so that they are, you are able to cut them out with the robot. If you have more than four cuts, then all you do is just kind of keep copying the, the cuts, right? In this row, I know that this is not too elegant, but at least it gives us a possibility for tweaking which is super important to have in this in this particular particular case um again if the robot is cramming like if it's locking down too much you can mess around with the with these movement factors for the end of move start of cut and end of cut start of move uh, but the closer you get to zero with these factors the um the higher the chances that uh, the, the robot will accidentally cut into the, 
the foam uh, as it's doing a travel move, which is not great. So, so keep an eye out for that. It's basically just simulation. Um, save the file. Right. Also, also, did you know that you can simulate uh, that 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 you can actually create animations in uh, with Grasshopper? This is just a bonus, <laughs> a bonus thing. Um, if I were to position this correctly, go for Arctic view, you know, something like this. Make the robot nice and orange as as they are. Something like that. Um, hide all of that jazz. Enable preview of how it should look like, which is right here. Oh yeah, and I don't need that part anymore because I re recreated it, so I'll just delete it. Um, we enable preview. We look at the custom preview right here. And let's create a swatch so that it's nice and white. Or maybe not nice and white, but rather nice and gray. Like that. Why are you all messed up? Hello? Uh, oh, that's because I need to... No. Intr oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Disconnect that, reconnect that, play that. Okay, now it works. Um, anyway, so we look at that. I will also kind of display the edges. I'm just making it nice. Edges, um, also swatch, also preview, custom preview for the swatch. Move that in. Look at the edges here with the custom preview. It doesn't show them with the custom preview. I forgot that it doesn't show them with the custom preview. God damn it. Sure. Okay, we will not be looking at the edges then. That's fine. We will be just looking at the Arctic view of this. Uh, the lines, we don't want to see the lines anymore. Like that. We just have this, this element here. I will create one more box. Show. I will just create one more box here. From here to zero. This is a box on which the robot will kind of hide. The robot will kind of stand. Hide that. Or not the robot, sorry, the stock. On which the stock will kind of stand. Let me increase the 1.1. 1.1. Like a pedestal, right? Type of situation. And now I can... And create an animation of it by going to the simulation slider, right? Because now it's going to look like that. Going to the simulation slider, right clicking on it, or uh, choosing animate, then browsing for, um, I'll just browse to the desktop. Where do I have that robot exports? That's going to be my folder because I already have it there. Robot exports, I will say that it is going to be um, not a bitmap. Well, sure, it can be a bitmap. I'll choose what kind of resolution I want. So eh, 720 is fine. Uh, how many frames? 300. Uh, if you play it in 300 frames, that's going to be 10 seconds. Sure, I will hit OK. And now it's going to export the frames for me. While it's doing that, I'll just load up Adobe Premiere. Uh, you can kind of work with any uh, stitching software, right? Uh, image stitching software, because what it's doing right now, it's giving me, it's giving me a crap ton of images, right? And those images need to be stitched into a movie. 
This is not, by the way, what you need to do for the course right now. Maybe later, if we have the time. Um, but this is just something that I find super nice to have, you know, the, the ability to do. Uh, so that, it's, it's still doing the thing. Is Premiere running? No, it's not. I'm, I'm loading it in. Come on, we can do it. There we go. So it's, it's finished the, the animation part and I'm still waiting for Premiere. There we go, it's running now. I'll just create a new project, um, whatever. I don't care. I'll just show you the animation in Premiere, not in anything else. I will not be exporting it, but basically you have all of these frames, yeah? So what you do is you double click on import media, uh, you find the plot, no, desktop, robot exports, select the first one, image sequence, open. That's the first one. Uh, frames, uh, frame rate, I will just change the frame rate to um, 30. I prefer 30. And now we have an animation of robot cutting as a separate file. And then you can kind of loop it. Let me just do, do this and uh, call, call it a day. So this is, this is done. And it's a tool for you to check if your, if your design is viable, if it's possible to do. Um, next up, we will do some uh, audio uh, or, or vocal analysis. Uh, not vocal, wait, how is it called? Sound analysis, right? We'll do some sound analysis, so that's going to be the next tutorial, but uh, by far, this was the, the hardest one of the course, I believe. Unless we figure something out, that's going to be even harder. But um, don't, don't be discouraged if you don't get it at the first try. Um, just, just keep trying. Okay, we are done. Go ahead and build your own robot with your own toolpaths. See ya.